Hey everyone, uh, this is Allison from Thriving Well Disabled, and I am coming to you today from my front yard. I have, I, yesterday I stumbled over a small uh, trash can and uh, did something not so great to my foot, and so I decided that going for a walk today was probably not the best idea. Nothing's bruised, um, but it hurts if I turn it a certain way, so I decided that I shouldn't take that risk today. Hopefully I'll be good to go tomorrow. Um, but I did want to pop on and talk to you guys today because I put out my next post, uh, which is all about uh, COVID-19 and, and using it as kind of a, a catalyst or a fulcrum to change our society for a better for the better. Now, now, why am I saying this? Well, because with COVID-19, um, a lot of things have gotten, well, worse. Uh, people are either trapped at home, uh, weathering the storm, or are forced to work and increase their chance of getting COVID. And a lot of people are out of jobs. And through all of this, we're seeing more and more examples of how broken so many pieces of our society are. We're seeing how inefficient and ineffective our healthcare system is. We're watching um, leadership in this country fail. Um, we're, we're recognizing the, the violence that has been occurring to um, black people and other minorities, um, especially in the hands of the police, for a long time. And because so many of us can't work right now, and because so many of us are, um, you know, at home and in some cases bored, um, we're a little more able to look at things and learn more and get more details and get rightfully angry and push back and try to fix things. So I want to encourage you, all of you, to think about what it is you might be able to do to help this process. Now, why as a community should the disabled community care and participate? Well, because we're subject to bias too. Um, people with visible conditions often are daily dealing with people staring, people asking stupid questions, people being rude and invasive, being infantilized, things like that. And um, those of us with invisible disabilities um, find ourselves dealing with bias and prejudice in a lot of our interactions, find our conditions being ignored or mocked by others. Um, we live in a world that isn't as accessible as it could be. Um, we live in a space where we can't always do what we'd like to do, um, simply because society hasn't bothered to include us. The other big change is because of how um, severe the risks are with COVID and because of how easily it's spread, a lot of things have gone online. Um, discussion groups and other things that are normally done in person are now predominantly online if they continue to exist. Um, music and artistic events can't be performed in large auditoriums because of the COVID risk. And so those who are performing are doing so in various venues, but many times accessible online. Um, jobs that everybody said could never be done from home are now being done from home. Things like that. Um, everything around us is being forced to reckon with the effects of COVID. And a lot of those are changes that have actually made things more accessible for us as a community. Um, no, I don't expect people with um, endangered immune systems to march. That's taking too many risks. I'm not doing that. But 
we don't have to march to support these movements. We just don't. There are all of these other things and other ways that we can help. I know that personally, um, I've looked into a few different things. Um, I have reached out uh, to Surge, which is a group focused on uh, social justice. Uh, and I'm participating in uh, the Poor People's Campaign uh, for Moral Equity. That's something that I think is huge uh, for our community because their focus is on poor people and the disabled community is disproportionately uh, poor. Um, most of us are at or near poverty simply because that's the cost of um, being disabled. Um, to survive, we have to get on government benefits, and government benefits don't pay particularly well. There are exceptions, of course, but there's a lot of us who are at or near poverty, who are poor, who are in financial need on top of everything else. And so the things that that platform uh, focuses on include a lot of what we as a community need. And right now, all their meetings are online, so you can participate. Um, most of the events that they're trying to uh, advertise are online, so we can participate. Uh, most of the ways they're doing outreach are online, so we can participate. Uh, it's huge. And uh, I don't think they're the only group that's doing it that way. Uh, most groups are. Uh, this is a time of opportunity for us as the disabled community. We can't go out and do the things we normally would that we would enjoy because of COVID, uh, because of our increased risk. Um, and I know a lot of people are at higher risk, not only because of their conditions, but because they need to have, you know, people in there helping, helping us. And those aren't necessarily people who live with us. So we're increasing our risk of exposure that way too. There's a lot of risks here, but what we can do is participate. What we can do is express our desire to continue to participate even after things get closer to normal. If we start being actively involved in the groups that are meeting online and make it known that we want to continue to participate when they become in person um, and really evaluate if we could or not. I suspect that if we're getting in deep with the group and we're becoming an integral member of the group, the group is much more likely to try to include us in the future. Um, if you're working a job and you asked to work from home and now you can, guess what? That is legally considered an accommodation according to the ADA. And so whenever the office starts to reopen, you can push back and request that that continue. I'm just asking that everybody take some time and look at where they are and think about what you can do right now to help the disabled community. Um, and it's absolutely fine if it's also helping you. That's great. Um, you know, but represent our community, reach out to places you might not normally reach out to, find those information and those resources that wouldn't normally be available, and let them know that you appreciate it. Let them know that you enjoy this. Let them know that you actively want to help. There are things that we can do from home without risking our health that will help others, that will help our community. And I've got a whole bunch of different suggestions on my blog post and I've linked to other groups, other sets of suggestions. But I just wanna say, we can help, we deserve help, 
and we will feel better when we provide help because knowing that you helped someone is actually one of the best ways to boost yourself emotionally all right so of course take care of yourself be safe but also think about what you could do given these new opportunities we have thanks to COVID so that you can put yourself in a better place and help others in that process. All right, take care everyone and keep thriving.